Hello, my name is Kevin Barry of barryaccountants.ie. We're a very online accountancy firm, virtually paperless. We scan everything and shred paper every day. You don't want to see it coming in the door. If you're considering moving on to QuickBooks Ireland, in other words, moving your accountancy business, accountancy function online, well, I'd highly recommend it. It'll free up your office from paper and files. It'll free up your accountant from doing a lot of the nitty gritty stuff because if you set this up correctly, and I'm gonna show you in the next hour how to do that, um, getting the basics right will make a massive difference to freeing up your bookkeeper time, your time, your accountant's time, to concentrate on the high value areas. Getting the profit and loss of balance sheet and all those reports right is all down to literally what we're gonna do, especially in the next five or 10 minutes. Okay, the basic stuff. And secondly, it's just like getting on the right road if you're going somewhere. If you go on the wrong road and you go a detour, you're gonna burn more petrol, you're gonna frustrate yourself, you're gonna be late for your appointment. Taking a shortcut of the setup will cause all those type of things to happen. So don't do it, all right? So we'll talk about the app in a moment, but I'm gonna show you now uh, how to do the basic setup correctly, okay? First five minutes, that's that. That's the first thing. So let's get going. Okay, so this is for people who aren't online, really. You know, this is, you're gonna find this great. Okay, so QuickBooks Ireland for newbies, that's me. Forgot to mention I'm a Platinum QuickBooks Online Advisor. I'm in all the usual places, all right? So don't worry about that. So I'll run through this in a moment, but let's go look straight at the QuickBooks setup. Okay, one second. So the first thing I want to point out is that there's this fantastic help section. So if you're stuck, even if you forget what I show you, right? See the help here, top right, most important part of any website? You go into help there, you can type in your question. Let's just say your question is banking. Okay, banking page, change the password, online banking, all of that type of thing. It, it'll take, I'll get my noggin out of the way there. It'll take a crack at guessing your answers. Is it how to get to banking, finding it on your dashboard, disconnecting or deleting accounts, all that stuff. But even if nothing is there that suits you, go down here to contact us, okay? And two things that I'd highly recommend. One is the chat room. Okay, if you click there, someone will come online, they'll introduce themselves, they'll ask you what your issue is. Okay, sometimes they'll even have you click the link and they'll control and fix your computer there. But they seem to solve it all the time. I'm talking five minute stuff, all right? Because they're very expert. Second thing is if it's a longer thing to explain that you don't, you don't have the time to be back and over because you've got to be on the move. Post the question here. It'll go to the Facebook community. Their developers are on there. This is the Intuit crowd. And just people like me who are on there see a question come up and there's always someone who's run into your problem previously, okay? And within an hour or two, no matter how complicated it is, they'll have the answer, really good. So that's if it's a longer thing. But if it's something that's kind of, you're there and you can handle it right now, go to the chat room, it's great. It wasn't there previously, it's, it's fabulous to have it now. So we point that out straight away. And the second thing is on the setup. You see this cog here? It's like a wheel in a machine. Okay, that's known as the cog. I'll deal with the dashboard later on in this presentation. Um, you go into the cog here, it's a few things that are vital. One is account and settings. You go in here, make sure you put in, this is a fictional business I've set up called the Coffee House. So I like the name and the web page is available in Ireland. The Coffee House, okay choose whether you're a sole proprietor, partnership, non-profit, limited liability, what industry are you in, and it's gonna set up other items relevant to your business ahead. So if you say you're a building firm, it'll put in things like subcontractors, um, withholding taxes or CIS, they call it in England. Um, if you're a restaurant, they'll put in, you know, buying in food, payroll will be a big part of that, kitchen equipment. If you're uh, professional services, things like consultancy fees, they'll set up the map of your accounts, which will make sure that when they're produced or they're emailed to you later on, 
I'm talking to the end product here, that they're relevant, that you can understand them, that you know what you're looking at. All right. So that's why that's important. Company email. When I put that in, the phone number, the website, when we look at the sales invoices in a second, the address, they'll be coming up there. Okay, just get that out of the way there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sorry, that's gone now. And building a subscriptions. So yeah, we're through now the company thing. That's only what deal you're on, and they'll always offer you a better deal. By the way, it's a month free, then you pay full price, or you do six months at half price, which is a way better deal, and then you pay full price. But this, this they have the odd sale and stuff as well. But just on the sales side of things, it's going to ask, you know, is there a message, if you're emailing out the type of messages that are going to go with it, and a message that gets you paid. Here's your invoice, we appreciate your prompt payment. You could also add in there, here's my bank account number. Feel free to put it in there directly. Um, you could do, we've other, we have a big sale on Friday, or we have a sale every Friday, or watch our Facebook for further offers. You can CC yourself or CC other team members, but you can send out bills automatically. I'll just show you a thing I like, which is the actual sales invoice that goes out. Okay. So here you can play around with the colors. So there's one, the coffee house and all that address stuff I just showed you is up there, emails. Okay, and who are you going to? And let's just say, I, I wanna change color. Let's go to orange. Oh my God, it's changed to orange. Okay, and oh, she's jumped away from me. So I get back in there. This is very easy now and I'm still only in the cog there. So you can change the fonts, the size. You see here, add your electronic funds transfer details. When in doubt, but let's just go to the next one, the content, right? Uh, I'm going to show you the map of this, this bill. Okay, down the bottom here, where it said add in your bank details. See, I put them in there. That's a fictional bank account for this presentation. There it is. Make it easy for the customer to pay. Okay, might be a photo text you want to the bottom. Let's just say it's your website address. All right, there's another one. Here's another one of the customer. Subscribe to our Facebook page for great offers. You know, these are all gonna be appreciated on emails. All right, do you attach the invoice to the email or don't you? Okay, and that's, it's great stuff going out. Okay, so that is there. And let's just see what this looks like. The moment of truth. Get myself out of the way there. I mean, that's nice, isn't it? Okay. So I haven't put in what we were selling them there, but it was coffees. And uh, this is just, just give you an idea. Okay. But that is eye catching. If there's eye catching, you have more chance of getting paid. All right. So that's part of the basics. And all that has really got to come down to putting in your name, address, phone number, emails, tax number. All right. A few other things I'm going to show you on this basic setup. And that was the custom form style. The chart of accounts, do you remember I mentioned, you know, what type of business you're in, it'll draw out, just a map of when you're putting in your invoices and your sales that it goes in the right place. Okay. Um, QuickBooks Lab is a bit more technical, not, this isn't with the new person. All this, there's some stuff that goes through every month, standing orders, you set them up, what's gonna come through every month, what products and services do you sell? This is a coffee house. All right, and what we're selling is coffee and I also allow for wines. And you put all the items you're selling and certainly when you're on the app, which I'm gonna mention now in a moment, you really see the benefit of that, okay? I'm still in the basic area. Manage users, sorry, I jumped by that. Okay, so there's me, there's a guy who works for me and there might be two or three or four of you, five of you who want access to this. Somebody wants to deal with suppliers and getting them paid and making sure the bills are in and claiming back the VAT. Someone else wants to deal with who owes us money, sending out statements, getting the money in. Someone else could be your accountant, wants to log in and run off a profit loss of balance sheet or there's a word called rec bank reconciliation. Everyone pretends they know what it means. A lot of people don't. What it means is everything that's on the bank statement, you just make sure that it's in the QuickBooks. And if something has gone out of QuickBooks that hasn't gone through the bank statement, like a check you've sent out just not cashed or maybe it was a mistake that something went out of the bank account on QuickBooks, 
but it was just a clerical error. We just needed to delete that. So you're just comparing the two because you want them matching up, all right? That's all the bank reconciliation is. The mystery is over, okay? What else is here? I mean, even just looking at that, import data has to do with the setup. You can import. If you're coming from a new area, such as you're a new person coming onto this, which you must be if you're watching this right now, it'll import your supplier names, your customer names, a lot of the key data. You just import in like their phone numbers or email address right in here. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, okay? Um, if for some reason you want to kind of take it out of here, it'll export it to Excel and you might want to compare it to existing lists you have and then re-import it. There you are. Budgeting, set the budget. The audit log, this is a great one. The amount of times I've had people say to me, oh, you know, where's something gone? You know, it's lost information. You go into this audit log and you can see who did what. So some people might have deleted items, not meaning to, maybe not even, maybe not even wanting to admit to it. Okay, but the audit log at least will show you what happened. And you'll have to re-enter enter everything. But at least you know what you're having to re-enter. Okay, it'll show you that. Smart look is nice presentation items. Down here isn't anything really too much to look about. That's only about the Intuit, your, your account setup. But that basic area, all right, is key. Get that done and you're really moving. Okay. So we're gonna click back on dashboard again and get going, okay? Now the next huge one, and it's absolutely fantastic, is how the QuickBooks Ireland version will read the bank account of your business, all right? Um, now don't let this frighten you. It's going on all the time. You know when you log in to look at your online banking, you log in with your codes and you can look around at it. What happens here is you give your codes to Intuit. Uh, I've been doing it for years. What happens is uh, with AIB and Bank of Ireland, Ulster Bank aren't on it yet, that'll happen, but they'll be there soon. Um, but with Bank of Ireland and AIB, who you know, are much more commonly used around Ireland, um, they push the information into QuickBooks. All right? It's not that QuickBooks or Intuit is going in, getting the information. You connect. And every day or two days, automatically, your bank will push the information into QuickBooks, all right? And there's always upgrades going on behind the scenes in these banks, I want to mention that. So like they do maintenance checks. And what you, you'll find you have to do is reconnect. So you're either a personal or a corporate customer. But the security side of it, it's not going in. You can't do transactions in your bank account from QuickBooks, nothing like that. It's just that the bank are sending over the information into QuickBooks. And depending on how you set up your bank section, which I'll show you now, um, QuickBooks will either put the transactions in exactly where they should be, or it will match them up with the bill that's been put in already and say this money to pay in that bill. And it'll ask you, is that right? And you just press match. Or it won't know where to put it. And it'll say, where do I put this? All right, so let's have a look at that. So I just have that picture there to show that you're just, all you're doing is gathering information. So I've clicked on dashboard again, and you see over here where it says needs attention, bank account. Slight difference between the two. It's updated seven days ago. So what's happened is there was an upgrade over the weekend and it'll ask you to reconnect. So reconnect, connect your bank directly to QuickBooks Online, fast, secure, and accurate. AIB, Bank of Ireland, TransferWise, and Revolut. They're excellent with it. So what you do is you connect now. Okay, there's us. We're the business corporate one. There's two types there. There's a personal where you just put in your ID number and PAC, or there's this corporate one where you need a little kind of code thing. Okay, so agree to everything. All right. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so I'm not giving away anything by giving my username. So there's nothing there to concern yourself. Password is only known to me. I know you can't see it. And then there's a code, which this little code box thing does for me. And I click that in. And 
as long as AIB aren't up to some backups or something, it'll work fine. And it's great because your software and your accounts are up to date. And you're, if you do nothing else in business, but watch your bank account, whether you're on QuickBooks Online or not, you do need to have a huge favor just to see where the money coming in is coming from and where the money going out is going to. So there, all the different accounts. And in this case, I'm gonna connect that one. Okay, off we go. Okay, and it goes off and reads it. It is fantastic. Look at that. Okay, so they're sharing that and they'll talk to each other now and it'll download in this case. Oh, that, those are kind of fictional accounts there. So see that? Unbelievable, knock your socks off. So the great thing about this is, is that what's happening in the account, yeah, they're already connected, yeah, great. Okay. And that's it. And they're already connected, but it'll keep the information coming in automatically into your Calendly program. And what it does is it downloads the information of money coming in and out in here and you tell it where it should go. So if it recognizes it, see it didn't recognize any of them, you say, where does this, this money that went out go? Where does that money that went out go? And you can set up little rules to say every time you see a certain comment or a name, you put that money in a particular place, all right? And if it's already in the account, good and well, and if it's not, if it's already in there, you just exclude it, and if it's not, you put it where it needs to go. So there's some bank fees there, for instance. So there, fees for the quarter. Okay, that's reviewed actually, already done. So these are the other little things that you do. And um, yeah, fantastic. But it reads the bank account all the time, all right? And don't worry about security, there's never been a problem. It's the banks are calling the shots, all right? So they're giving the information out and it tells you here what you need to look at. Great stuff, all right? So I've showed you a few upgrades there actually um at the moment so i mean the bank is a cracker the vast we're going to mention the app is unbelievable the way um you know you can got that help function so if you get jammed up or stuck click on that help and someone there will be online in seconds to help you you know so if you don't have the time for that post it to the community it's great okay let's keep going 